Hi guys, happy Thursday. I'm Ashley Live and this is the first episode of Vibing with Ashley Live. So I'm very happy to bring this to you. Um, this idea created from the fact that I wanted to showcase amazing musicians um, because as you know, the industry has come to a halt since COVID. So no music, no music venues, and so what do we do? So that's why the show was created to focus on talented musicians and then, you know, focus on talented musicians, have them perform a song or, or something for you. And then we're gonna open up the floor to Q and A's. Um, I see some people have joined now. Justin, LLD, Joaquim, Michael is in here. So we're gonna bring Michael into the room. We're waiting for Michael to join. Hi, Justin. And hi, Michael. Hey, how are you? Hey, hey, how are you this evening? Doing good, doing good. Awesome. Looking good. Still getting set up. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> nice hat collection you got in the back. I do, I try. I like my hats. Yeah, good stuff. You know, hope you're a Los Angeles fan. You know, I'm... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just telling the people that have tuned in, this is Vibing with Ashley Live. This is the first episode. You are Michael Cassidy, and we are here to just learn a little bit more about you, um, your passion for music. You're going to sing a song for us. We're going to do a Q&A, and we are going to have some good times. Yes. Sound good? Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, okay let's do it. So let's start from the beginning. So you're originally from Miami. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sunshine so, State. Huh? The Sunshine State. Sunshine State. I love it. But Miami is way too hot this time of year. It is. It's just outrageously hot. I remember at Christmas time when everyone up north is dealing with snowstorms, we're outside playing basketball. Yeah. I mean, I'm from Syracuse, New York. So we used to, we, every winter, we just have like lake effect snow and it's, seven degrees here and yeah. it's just it's horrible but i always wanted to live in miami because i'm like oh my god i just i want sun anybody who's, who's from syracuse feels the exact same way so yeah. uh so yeah so <laughs> no tanning beds we want the real thing <laughs> we just want to be bronze right <laughs> totally totally and i tell you i was red down there i was red red yes wear your spf <laughs> absolutely <yeah. laughs> So let's start from the beginning. Um, like I said, you're from Miami. How young were you when you first got into music? So the story goes that I was a, a little baby and that they brought me around a piano that I think was in an auditorium and that I just walked up to it and I just started playing with the keys. And they were just like, it sounds way too good for just a random baby. Like he's actually playing a melody. You know, I yes. have no recollection of that. This is what was told to me. That's incredible, um, though. So, so apparently, <laughs> I, had, I had this gene, I guess. This must be my genetics or something. And I had this relationship with this piano, and I was diddling this song. It was probably Old McDonald's, let's be real. But hey. hey. Was what it, or actually, in today's though. kids, it would be Baby Shark. Maybe I was playing Baby Shark on the ba piano. Yay! Yeah, hey. Baby Shark <laughs> years and years ago. Do, 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 do. So something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm playing Baby Shark on the piano, and then um, my dad, who is a musician, so I actually, I do have musicians in my family all around. My dad, he was a bass player. Um, my uncle was a guitar player. My other uncle is a drummer. They literally had their own band. Um, yeah. so, when, so when he heard that, I guess that just made him happy and proud. He's just like, I'm gonna make my son, you know, he got me a keyboard. And so I kind of like started diddling on the keyboard, um, but that wasn't my favorite because he had a guitar. And he had a bass. And I was like, that's way cooler than this keyboard. You know, this like Casio thing you get from Toys R Us when it was Oh, old. yeah. Everyone had those growing up. Yeah, we all had Casio <laughs> keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> and, and why did everybody just play the pre-programmed melody? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. It didn't bother wait, me. Wait, I just want to play it. still have the Casio keyboard, though? Does anyone still have them? Or do you all just sell them on eBay? <laughs> They, they have to be dead by now. That's what I'm thinking. These, those things are like eternal. Sister, <laughs> At every flea market you go. 
Yeah, my sister just joined. So Colette, are Casio keyboards still a thing or no? She's a pianist. So I mean, I don't think okay, so she said yes, yeah, she has a Casio keyboard. Okay, so sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. Continue. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Um, so yeah, my, um, I wanted to play the guitar instead because I thought it was way cooler of an instrument. Um, and my dad had both a guitar and a bass, although he's really a bassist. I think the guitar was just for show. But I actually, I just picked up the bass. And, and ironically, my dad didn't give me lessons. I just grabbed his bass one day. I put it on my lap and I just faked it. It was like Mary Kay, fake it till you make it. And I just started playing it. to the radio like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea or the notes I was playing, but it was just really cool to me. And so from then on, I just played like every day. I went to the music store like every day. It became my obsession um, until like when I was around 17, I was joining guitar and bass competitions in Miami. And I actually was in a competition against the famous uh, Felix Pastorius. He's the son of the infamous Jaco Pastorius. He and I competed against each other because they, they're from Miami. Awesome. Um, and from that, I was going to go to Berkeley School of Music. It had always been my dream. At that point, I was just like, well, I don't know what else I'm going to do with my life. I'm going to study music. Um, yeah. But then things took a turn. And? <laughs> so, and? So I, at that well, point, wait, we're, wait, we're jumping the gun here. We're jumping the gun here. But that's how right. That's why I stopped. We, we're jumping the gun here. So you would say that your dad inspired you? Absolutely, yeah. I have family roots in music, so yeah. Mm -hmm. And what musicians inspired you back in the day? Or who inspires you right now? So besides the plethora of, of pop culture artists, you know, like Bruno Mars, Ed Sheeran, your, you know, your Prince, Michael Jackson, things like that. In terms of like instrumentalists, it was all about Victor Wooten for me, um, Bill the Buddha Dickens. It's all about Steve Vai on guitar, Pat Metheny. Um, so I was really, really concentrated into the virtuosos of the instrument. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but also definitely I'm influenced by all pop music, all R&B, especially reggae. I mean, you know, my mom's Jamaican, so it's just all Bob Marley through the house. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's hard when people ask me, they're like, oh, what's your favorite genre? What's your... That's like the worst question you ask a musician. Don't ask me my favorite genre. No, it's everything. What do you like to play most? Though. It's so <laughs> annoying. People don't understand. They don't get it. But inside, it's like grinds my gears because I'm like, you know, I like all types of music, right? Like, you have to. <laughs> but, um, because you have to be like, you have to know, like, your stuff. Like, maybe you might listen to Jamiroquai, you listen to Michael Jackson, you listen to Ed Sheeran. Like, those are like different types of music. And as a musician, you need to be open to that because you never know what elements from them you could bring into your own. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I'll be, I'll find something about Neil Diamond that I wanted that I like, you know, it's, yes. it's not, I know the, the whole what's your favorite genre thing always kind of irks me a little bit. Totally, but, yeah. totally. So talk to me about you were living in Florida. And when did you come to New York City? Oh, gosh, <laughs> that's like a, that's like a pilgrimage story. <laughs> apparently I've been all over the, I've been all over the US. Uh -huh. from, my, from Miami, actually. So the reason I didn't go to Berkeley when I was 17, um, my uncle, my other uncle was just like, you know, you're going to be a starving musician. You can't make it like that. You need to have a degree. Right. Um, and you need to have something to fall back on. Now, the way I think about that is that that's the worst advice ever. Mm -hmm. But I get what he was saying. He didn't totally. want me to be um, struggling, per se. So actually, I went and moved to Michigan. I lived in Detroit mm -hmm. and um, I went to school and I got, a, I got a couple of undergrad degrees. It was actually hilarious. So I, you, you'll never guess, what, what do you think my, my undergrad degree is in? One of them, um, which one? I'm gonna say like, what do chemistry? I look like? Ke chemistry? I did like chemistry and I was good at science. So it was a Bachelor of Science, it was, but it wasn't chemistry. Okay, so I was in the right realm. You are in the realm, you're in the realm. You're in the realm. It was a uh, nutrition. <laughs> Exactly. This is before, the, before the whole vegan movement. I was just, I was really into nutrition because I was also at that time a personal trainer when I was, because right. um, I did sports in high school. So I was in the personal training and they were like, oh, we'll go get a degree in nutrition. So I got a degree in nutrition. I did uh, physical therapy. I did public health. And, um, and I was taking some prerequisites for med school. I'm glad I didn't go through with that. Okay, but um, I got, I just did so a, a slew of things. <laughs> 
Yeah, I did a slew of things I didn't know what I wanted to be. Like, cause yeah. deep down inside, I knew I wanted to do music, but then I have this kind of cloud over my head, like, you're not gonna make it. Those artists struggle. My sister's a painter. My sister went to a famous art school mm -hmm. in San Francisco and then dropped out. Mm -hmm. Why? Because to her, it was just, you know, she had the same harrowing cloud, like, you know, back then mm -hmm. it's just like, can you make it? Is this a wise decision? Should I be using yeah. my money to be an accountant? So then even after that, I went and I actually got um, my MBA in finance. Oh, wow. So went and took another left turn. Exactly. That's like so. <laughs> went, I, was yeah. I like numbers. I, I, I wanted, I'm going to stay in that lane. So I left the, nutrition, um, left the nutrition life behind. And then I went down south to Tennessee. Wow. See, I'm taking you all over the United States here. Every, we're going <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> so I, I went to, I went to the, I went to Tennessee honestly for the one reason any most men would move across country other than a job is a girl. So she was pretty, she was like the best thing I'd ever seen. Uh -huh. I wanted to marry her. So I again long story short, I moved down across the country for love. <laughs> hey, I know people that have done that. You're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> of course he has, right? Because again, it's uh -huh. either a job or money. There's only reason a man's gonna move like across the country. Job or job or, uh, or for love. So I, I, I'm with my wife in uh, Tennessee, then we move from Tennessee to Indianapolis, and then we have our own disagreements and we actually end up getting divorced in Indianapolis. So it, in Indianapolis, I was working um, as a finance manager for a fitness corporation and I was, I, was, I was fine. I was, you know, the same regular corporate lifestyle, working 80 to 90 hours a week. You make a good salary, but you just live at work. And um, one of my best friends was like, Mike, man, you could have made it. It's like, what do you mean I could have made it? He's like, you were really good at, at, at music in college. You used to come to my dorm room. You used to like slay it on the guitar and you used to kill it. Like, man, I wonder what would have happened to you if you actually pursued music. And I was like, yeah. low key slapped in the face. I'm like, yeah, man, totally. I could have made it. And I'm just like, <laughs> all of this is now you know, congregating in my head, all of these ideas are just like really starting to come at odds. And every time I come into work, I'm like hating my boss even more. <laughs> he has no idea. Like, why yeah. is he bad room, Mike? Because I'm like, because I don't want to be here. You know, and I just realized I had spent, what, four years in undergrad, two years in a master's. I spent like seven years of my life doing something I really didn't want to do. And you know, seven trying years to. a long time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like a whole career I did. And um, just to yeah. live up to everybody else's standards, just to live up to what society was saying, well, that's what a real man does. A real man goes and gets a career and you just run it out and you work through it. Doesn't really speak about, well, you should do something you're passionate about and pursue it above all, but just make sure you get the check, you have the white picket fence and et cetera. Right. I had that and I wasn't happy. Right. So I left it. So I saved up as much, as much money as I can and I quit. Um, so fate has it, I actually was moving to L.A. I was mm -hmm. just like, L.A. must be the place for music, right? That, that's Hollywood. <laughs> You're I'll or just, L.A. I'll, I'll just go out there and, and people will find me. Um, yeah. So no, actually, I came, so I was vacationing in New York for the summer. Um, and boy, why did I go to the what, Bronx first? Wait, 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 wait. What year did you go to New York? What, what so year was I it? left, I went to New York in 2015. Okay. I'm just trying to get a time frame is because, you know, 2000 versus 2015, like totally different New York cities. You know what I mean? Yeah. Totally different from the New York of the 80s, right? And then, of then course. Then, <laughs> that's what I heard, apparently. Um, yeah. I first went to the Bronx, which was hilarious. My, my journey through New York was hilarious because I had no... New York is unlike any place you'll ever be, ever. I've just yeah. never seen any city like it. I remember just like walking over the sidewalks in Times Square. I'm just like, you guys put garbage on the sidewalk? Like, I what happened, to a, what happened to a trash can? Like <laughs> the, the big apple, I was like the big dirty apple. What's going on here? I didn't, uh, I, I really didn't get it. So I had no knowledge of anything New York. So where's the first place I go to? I'm just like, oh, I'll just go to the Bronx. Wait, why? <laughs> exactly, because I didn't know. <laughs> Wait, who goes to the Bronx the first time? So I went, to not just any part of the Bronx, because the Bronx has really nice parts. Why did I go to the South Bronx? Oh, that's the worst part. <laughs> the worst part, South Bronx. <laughs> so there was so much, there was so much, I, I will say this though, there was so much 
culture there mixed yeah. with, you know, the sad realities of, of systemic oppression that you see. I, I, the amount of people who are, who are strung out on drugs. And I mean, I remember one lady running naked in the streets that you see there. It was just like, is this real life? Or every, let's talk about every Friday and Saturday night, my neighbors yeah. across the street are blasting music like till 4.30 in the morning. In yeah. Indianapolis, you don't, you don't see that. Like, Not at all. Somebody can call the cops. I, What's going on? <laughs> Not only that, their townhouses and the house to your left is playing one set of music and the house to your right is playing something completely different. Yeah. I'm just like, this is interesting. But I did like the fact that you could blast your music till 4.30. So I, I got on yeah. quick. <laughs> um, the only well, place you can do that it, is it the Bronx, really... though. The, the, you can't do it anywhere else. The Bronx, you can do it. But anywhere else in the city, they'll call the, the cops on your ass. This, this is probably true. I haven't heard that. Only my time in the Bronx was, was did I hear something like that. So I, <laughs> I'll give you that one. Um, <laughs> but after, after that, I met a producer at that time. He was like a local promoter and he saw me street performing because I was just like, well, I have no clue where to start. Yeah, I'm just going to throw up in my case. I see some other people doing it and I'm just going to play. And he saw me playing and he's just like, wow, man, you know, you're really good, blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, what are you doing? Where are you going? And I'm just like, well, I'm actually moving to LA at the end of the summer. And he's just like, why would you do that? Mm. I'm like, well, isn't that where you go to get discovered? He's like, he's like no, 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 no. New York, it's all, it's all about New York City because it's small, it's congested. You have important people that you're going to run into. You can network here. And that's the beauty of the city. Never mind the garbage you see on the street. But there's a lot of uh, good resources in this city. And it is. And you know what? That, I actually listen to him. I hate winter. I hate it. I hate the snow. I think it's BS. I think it's some <laughs> other nature. You know, yes. Armageddon is, is winter for me. And I'm right. looking forward to never having another winter. So, so right. when this guy's like, stay in New York, I'm like, <sighs> not really. But anyway, I took his advice. And to say the least, it's just full of miracles. It's full of miracles. It's a city that never sleeps. And he was right. I've met so many important people that you're just walking around like normal. Whereas yeah. in LA, they're all kind of spread out and they're quickish and you have to drive everywhere, et cetera. So totally. I, wherever he is, if he's listening, I just want to say thanks. Yes, thank here. you to that gentleman that said no LA because I'm not a big <laughs> fan of LA. I'm happy that you're in New York because the thing is you are a subway performer. So the thing is when you perform on the subway, you never know who's walking by. You never know who can hear you from two stories above. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the Precisely. cool thing about it is like in LA, like where would you even perform? I guess I'll just join everybody on the strip or wherever they go. I don't, the, I don't know. The Grove, Hollywood maybe Boulevard. Like, yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't even. Yeah, Hollywood Boulevard. I mean, that's that's a shit show to be going with. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the music that you create. So interestingly, you know, and this is why again, New York's going to come up a lot. A lot of the people that I've met. I've, I've done so many various projects. I remember one of my first big projects, this guy saw me playing uh, Spanish guitar, which I love mm -hmm. my Spanish guitar. I, I have a, a strong Latin influence in my music. And he's just like, hey man, would you come to my studio and help me out? I have a pretty special project. I'd love to, love to see what you could do to. Lo and behold, it's a commercial for AARP. What? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my first That's project, so random. <laughs> my first big deal was working for AARP. Oh um, my God. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> I still remember yes! the song. I remember it when it came on TV and I'm just like, yo, that's me. Like I could yeah. hear my instrument, I was like mad hype. And then one time randomly I heard it in Zara, they remixed it and were like bumping it like an EDM beat. Um, Amazing. Very, very radical. So. That was like one of the first things I worked on. I worked, I collaborated with God, everyone I could think of. Anyone I would come into contact with, I'd be like, hey, you, are you down to song write? You wanna play? Let's play, let's jam, let's write a song. Um, I've, I've even collaborated with DeBarge, DeBarge Entertainment. Amazing. How did that does, collaboration come about? It, great, actually, great. Yeah. Uh, he's a great guy and I had no idea. But I was like, man, you know, you look a lot like that guy from DeBarge. I'm like, is this really his son? I just, I don't know. Well, wait, but how did you meet him, though? How did you meet him? In, in the subway. No way. He was, he was walking by. Wait, wait, is this, was... is this, is this Michael right now? He's in the chat with us.
Yeah, yeah, he remembers. <laughs> He's like, oh, I, was, I was listening to you, and then he says Subway. I'm like, oh, okay, 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 I got it now. Sorry, I was a little confused. <laughs> Look at the screen. Yeah, I'm looking, yeah. I'm looking. He was, <laughs> Mike is the shit. He was walking by, and I just remember this guy who was like really clean cut, and he was just like, He's like, you're crazy, because I'm performing some song, I think, by The Temptations. And he was collaborating at that time with David Ruffin Jr., yeah. the son of David Ruffin. And so yeah. he just thought it was so coincidental how the stars would align that I would sing that. And so I started working with him um, ever cool. since. And then, but like, in like manner, it's the same way I work with other producers. Um, people will be like, hey, I want to work on a track. They'll send it to me. I'll add some guitar, some bass, et cetera. And then... Uh, send it back so that's that's what i do that's why i'm not really like tied to one genre i'll, I'll right. work on anything i'll, do, I'll yeah. work on anything but my own personal music like i like pop stuff mm -hmm. so who would you most like to collaborate with um like if i had to do <laughs> strangely enough i would love to do a song with bruno mars yeah simply because i feel like the two of us together would look hilarious because I've been called like the Amazonian Bruno Mars or something like, I mean, can you imagine like, oh my I look God. like Hercules and Bruno Mars is like five, what is he, like five, four or five, five? He's, like I'm he's six, tall. he's five, right? <laughs> Wait, it would be interesting. I'm six, like six and a half. Oh, okay. Wow. I mean, I've never met you like in real life. I've only met you. <laughs> I've only right, you've only seen the videos. During sound checks and stuff. Muscles, but... muscles are bigger in person. They oh. are. Muscles are much more bigger. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I let. I guess let's go to the New York City subway. So tell us how you got started performing in the New York City subway, and how long have you been doing that? Um, I've never. I never stopped since I came here. And okay. to me, it was just like I didn't understand why all musicians weren't doing it. Yeah. Because usually where I played before, well, you would have a rehearsal space and then you would only perform at a gig. Mm -hmm. In New York, it's almost like you can display your talent and what you're working on and people donate to you in, in lieu of appreciation. You yeah. don't get that anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, hell, why wouldn't you do this? This is almost, why am I just going to rehearse in my room? Why don't I just go out and do it? Totally. And yeah. the, that was my first mindset. But what I realized was that you're constantly on display. It actually makes you that much better mm -hmm. because it, it removes an element of laziness. Like you can't just sit back and just be like, ah, uh, you know, in your underwear with the fan on, like you actually have to, to put a smile on and you have to yeah. put a show on for, for like at yeah. least three hours. Yeah. So it, it made me, it, it definitely made me into, into a better performer. Absolutely. So to me, it's just like, that's how I stay sharp. That's how I stay mm -hmm. fresh. So if somebody mm -hmm. asks me to, to sing or to perform, I'm always ready. There's yeah. never a dull moment. You so know? talk to so. me about, so talk to me about, so you haven't been in the subway system for probably several months, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or have you? Are you like, are you going down there in secret? <laughs> I think it was like 1989 the last time I was in the subway. Let's be real. Oh, it was March for me. Like pretty much everyone I talked to was like, it was March. It was March. And if there's anybody in this chat who's been in the subway since March or recently, let us know because I'm petrified. I don't want to go down there. Yeah, yeah. It's best to be out in the sun. Um, but, you know, sanitize your hands, wear your mask, I would just say. Yeah. Stay safe. And don't yeah. travel if you don't have to. Totally. Um, so tell us um, what venues that you performed at in New York City. Uh, all of them on the Lower East Side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been in a couple bands and we performed on the Lower East Side. That's my favorite because yeah. it's just more of an organic, nat like a more of an organic audience. They really like live music. Right. Um, so like Arlene's Grocery, Bowery, Bowery Electric, um, mm -hmm. The Knitting Factory, um, geez, the Pianos. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much all down there. I've actually performed in Harlem, too. Uh, Shrine is another good one. Sylvanas is another good one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can't think of any more than that, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite venue to play at? My favorite one? Ooh, that's like a tie. That's definitely a tie between pianos or uh, Bowery Electric. Mm -hmm. And the real reason why, and this is going to sound super nerdy, 
is because they have a good sound engineer. You, you can't skip out on the sound engineer. A lot of people don't understand all. that. Like, I can sound great on my own, but that person can really F me up. Totally. Wrong EQ, wrong mic, wrong effect, and then I just sound like hot junk. The so that's why, love, that's why I love that's why I love Bowery because whoever that yeah. guy is, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Whoever that guy is, what's his name? I don't Do know. know. His name is Guy. <laughs> John Doe. His name is Guy. And yeah, his name is Guy. John Doe. <laughs> whoever you are, I love you. We love you. And I love you and our fans love you. Um, so I guess if you weren't doing music. What do you think you'd be doing? What industry? So what do I do on the side? Um, and that kind of talks about how I've stayed afloat. So remember that little secret I shared with you further back? Um, I got my MBA in finance. Right. Well, I started learning investments when I was in college because the recession hit in 2008. And right. it was like the best time to see and learn what the economy does. Mm -hmm. So on your short term debt cycle, it happens about every five to eight years. So I just remember, <laughs> I had a crazy idea back then. And I was just like, man, I'm going to take out a loan and throw it in the stock market. <laughs> 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 I took out a student loan and threw it in the stock market. Yeah. And I'm just like, everything's dirt cheap. It has to be a great idea. Mm -hmm. And so I started to make money with my young self. And I took it out. Now, I remember one of the companies I invested in was Google. Well, Google back then was like $300 a share. Right. Now it's 1500 Incredible. I feel real done for, for taking it out. So yeah. I went back to my roots uh, not too long ago, and I started to, and, and, you know, pensions, mutual funds, investments, that's one side of the business, but there's another side called the hedge fund. Essentially, mm -hmm. you're speculating on price. So I went to that arena. So basically, to make money, now I'm a speculator in the market. So mm -hmm. I, I, do, I do Wolf of Wall Street, if that helps oh. you understand. Yes, I love that movie. Great movie. And without all the drugs, of course. <laughs> without all the drugs and the, and the crazy talk and the yachts. I'm the pure angel, Wolf of Wall yeah. Street. I'm no, but my name is good. I'm the lamb of Wall Street, you know. <laughs> I love it. I... That's such a great story because it's like you think of like being a musician and do you have another side job or do you have something else that you're doing full time? So, I mean, that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, if I would. Yeah, I don't. To be honest, all of the gig workers now, like it's it's really hard for them. It's hard for me just because I miss performing so much. But also, like, if you, what if I didn't have anything else to do? I you know. know. My, rent, my rent is two grand a month. Oh, my gosh. Like, yeah. you can't just rely on unemployment forever. No, it's, it's no. It's going to run out. So I, I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm thankful in that way that I can do something else. Exactly. Um, but make no mistake, I, I can't wait to get back to doing music full time. I also still, you know, I have my studio at my house, so I work on projects here. So it's not, it's not so bad for me. Mm -hmm. So if you could change anything about the music industry, what would it be? If I could change anything about the music industry. Yeah. Um, I actually don't really, oh, well, I don't really have many gripes with it, but I guess the way that I was introduced to it, you know, when I was, tr when I was first trying to set my foot and be an artist and, and get signed, basically I was told that, I don't want to. I don't want to say what they told me because I want to okay. be politically correct. But okay. you're going to pay an unfair share of dues to get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. I.e., because nobody knows you yet, you're not proven. You know, think about um, think about like the deal they did for the Backstreet Boys. Their their manager basically took a huge unfair share. Or think about what the great Sam Cooke went through, where he was basically being paid pennies because they owned the publishing and the masters most of what he, he worked on. Yeah. Um, and I can understand if you're not in the creative process, but if you're someone like me who writes and does most of the creative work, you would want to be compensated for that. Even if you do that up front, you're, if you want to get signed on, not as an indie artist, but if you want to go get signed on the record company, you're basically going to have to get, you know, kicked in the rear to join. Totally. And that, 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 
I just, I don't know. That doesn't sit well with me. I get it, and I'll, I'll play along with it. But yeah. I would actually just, I just would rather go the indie route anyway. So. Yeah, I think that's what most artists are doing now too, because it's like everyone back in the day was like, oh my god, like I'm signed to this label, but like. The labels, it's like you want to be on a label just to say it, but like you're really, you're really going to excel doing your own thing. And then you just put all that content out and, you know, the music industry has changed so much. Right. Yeah. And then they, they don't even talk about the people who are on the label who get dropped and end up owing the record company money. Oh, my gosh. For the, for the advance they gave them. So it's not like it's a holy grail, you know, panacea, one answer to it either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what song do you wish that you wrote and why? A song I wish I wrote? <laughs> um, mm, mm. <laughs> you can say it. I think like the, I think like the 13 year old in me would be like, I wish I wrote Thriller. Because obviously oh, yeah. it's the best selling song of all time. Um, and I think that the campfire me wish I wrote more than words. Mm -hmm. And then I think that the, I don't even know how to categorize it, that Donna Lewis song. Oh, I, <laughs> I love, love you forever. always forever. Oh, forever, forever, forever. forever. <laughs> yeah, that's catchy. For some odd reason, I just wish I would have wrote that. But she was like, a, wasn't she a one-hit wonder? I like only know of that one. No, I think... Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a good um, music statistician or historian. I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. do remember that one. They still play it, so. They still do. Yeah. Tell me about those residuals. She's still getting <laughs> coins. <laughs> so, um, what's the best advice that you've ever been given? The best advice that I've ever been given, and the advice I would give anyone else, is that, you know, when you really go after your passion, because I had I had a more than stable career. I had a more than the white picket fence lifestyle. And now I've lived on, I went from having stability in my life to literally not knowing where my next cent is gonna come from. I literally had to hustle for every dime. And mm -hmm. that to me was like, uh, it was unnerving, it was an anxiety. And sometimes you wonder if you're wasting your years away. Mm -hmm. You know, I could be going this path, what could you do? The, the best advice someone told me was that, you know, live in the moment and yeah. pursue what you love, do all the things that you're afraid of, mm -hmm. because that's how you find the most fulfillment in life. Um, and it was then that I decided to really just put all my eggs in my music basket and go after it. And I don't feel like I work. I don't. Like, I yeah. just don't feel like I've worked in five years. But that's it, great, though. It, it really doesn't ever do. feel like a job to me. It just, it's yeah. just more like, more, I don't know, more so feels like, I just wake up, do what I like to do. Sometimes you have to deal with people. That's not like the best thing ever, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, Hopefully some bandmates. Not so much during COVID, though. You know what I mean. Bandmates who don't have the same vision can be difficult. Right. But um, but yeah, I I think just pursue what you love to do, and you, there there can't be a regret out of that. Exactly, because if you, you know. do what you love, you you never worked a day in your life because you love it. Think about all the people who, who go or who would have went my route. And then actually, I actually hear that. I take that back. So when I'm at performances, a lot of times people will come up to me and be like, oh, man, I used to play the guitar when I was blah, blah, blah. And, um, um, you know, now I'm, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. And I was like, wow, I wish I really stuck with it. It must be really fun. You must be having a great time of your life. Almost like they're hinting at, I, I, wish, I, I wish I pursued that. I yeah. wish I stuck with that. And that's why I left in the first place, because I said, why am I here in Indy, in this right. devil snow? <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just, I'm not even really living. You know, I go to bed, I wake up, I go to work, I go back, I watch the news for 10 minutes, I go back to sleep, I wake up, rinse, repeat. Yeah. That's just not, that's not life to me. So. And so many people think that's the norm, right? It's like, oh, we go to work, and then we come home, and we have dinner, and we like, watch TV and then we do it all over again. So it's like, I totally get that. But yeah. to do something that you're passionate about, like that is the answer to everything. Yeah. So I'm gonna flip it up on you. So what advice would you give to other musicians during this quarantine? <laughs> what, 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 what? Uh, so I think, I think the main thing that 
that most musicians, most gig workers to like to really speak to them. What they're going through right now is what how, am I even going to make it out? Like, yeah, forget the music part. Like a lot of people are just thinking about surviving. They're thinking about, can I make it out of here without being evicted? You know, can I, yeah. you know, I have to choose rent or food, rent mm -hmm. or bills. The credit card payments don't stop. Like I have so many obligations and these are musicians too. And they have, you know, a lot of them have just really been, sometimes when you live on passion, like, <laughs> like what I did for a couple of years when I first started, uh, I had savings, but I made a promise not to use any of it. So I was really kind of living check, check to check. Basically what I made is what I spent. And, yeah. but for a lot of people, they don't have savings. Yeah. And just what they made right before COVID is all they have. So I think a lot of musicians, like what I would tell them is that no matter how bad it's going to get, you can pick yourself up again. But the yeah. only way that's possible is if you have a focus and a vision. Otherwise, you're going to get lost in it. And that's, that's really, it's not going to be a very good sight for this country. And hopefully they can get their shit together in Washington. Um, hopefully. Because that would be death. Everybody's hurting. We're all yeah. hurting. Yeah. Me, everybody on this live, we yeah. are all hurting. Everyone's <laughs> family's hurting. Like, no one's, like, in the clear. Totally. So, other than Instagram, where else can people find what you're up to? Plug your website, your Twitter, anything where people can find you, your website. Put it all out there. Uh, Ashley, you're talking about my weakness now. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> So people want to know, like, can they only find you on Instagram or is it like, or are you on MySpace or what's up with that? Yeah, so definitely not MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I am on Instagram. I am on Facebook. I have my own Facebook page. Um, you can find all of my latest developments on Instagram. I pretty much live on that. That's, that's my platform. That's how you'll find me. Um, YouTube page. I've always thought about it. I feel like I should, but I feel like I'm already swamped enough. Um, yeah. I think when this is all over, I'm going to hire like a social media manager, mm -hmm. somebody to, to do that stuff for me because I, there's no way I can keep up. No, I have the guy for you. He's in this chat and I will connect you with him after we're done. He's my good Thank friend. You. He, he's not only going to hook me up, but he's going to hook you up. Hook me up. I need <laughs> See? That's what I'm talking okay. about. Actually. Got you. <laughs> so this is the part of the show where you're going to you're going to do your little thing and you are going to perform for us. Awesome. Awesome. Let me put this back so you can see the guitar here. See, I thought I would try and match with the guitar and everything. I love it. I appreciate it. I got it. <laughs> No, I have to be honest, I haven't warmed up, so. That's okay. I mean, you can warm up right here. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> Solution is my friend, but she stays strong. Yeah, yeah. She is always in my corner, right there when I want. All these other girls attempting to when you're gone, and they say, Do you need that? Do you think I'm content? Do I make you feel like she's in my life? No, not really, cause oh, I've seen that found myself a cheerleader. She is always right there when I need.
Oh my gosh, we lost him. Where'd he go? Did it freeze on your end too, guys? Okay, I'm gonna invite him back. I don't know what just happened. I know, I lost him too. Where is he? Where is he? I think it may have been his, I know, we lost him. Sorry, it, the whole thing froze on my end and we lost him. Um, hold on, let me see if I can add him back. I know, tell him to come back. We lost you. Oh I, have my no God, idea what you. I have no idea what happened. We have no idea what happened. It froze on my end, and I'm like, I hope he's still playing. I don't know what's happening. But uh, Ken I says, finished out. You can take my word for it. I promise. Yeah. Ken says you're too hot for Instagram. I'm too hot for Instagram. Too I am hot. hot. It is hot in there. Wait, wait, wait. So, okay. I don't really think that was the way to end the song because it was like you were playing, and then all of a sudden it froze on my end. It froze on everybody else's end. So, you know. Well, I'll do one more. <laughs> okay, one more. Are we go with one more? I owe you one more. And you know what? I'll even play with my nice, hot, sexy Latin guitar. Hey! Oh, okay, sorry. It's not Ken, it's Marshall. That's oh, Marshall, Marshall, yeah, Marshall. 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 What's up, sorry, Marshall? I know him as Ken. So. <laughs> Marshall, Ken. Marshall looks like Ken. That's the deal. What? Marshall looks like Ken. <laughs> the Ken doll. <laughs> I think that works. All right, last one. Let me touch my screen so I don't like come out. I'm in love with the 
love you. Ah! Wow. And no blackout, right? <laughs> we didn't lose no you. I heard the whole song. Amazing, full song. amazing job. The chat was blowing up. So now it's the last section where if Anybody in this chat room has questions for Michael, shoot them in the chat. We're game. Shoot, shoot. Can you see the chat, Michael, or no? I think so, yeah. Okay. Let me check it. Bring this closer. Amazing, amazing. Next, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Hendrix, right? Yeah, let me pull out the electric guitar just from Jimmy. Yes. Also, that AARP commercial, is that somewhere on YouTube or no? Yeah. You need to send me the link to that. I, I need to see that. <laughs> I like, do. <laughs> you want to put it on Instagram. I should, right? I should post it. Like, oh, first project I ever work on. These yeah. are none other than Michael Cassidy. Yeah. OK, so my sister, Colette, she wants to know what's your next project. Oh, gosh. Um, I have a couple of projects right now, but I want to start making uh, more commercial music. I want to start using more of my instrumentals uh, for TV, film, etc. cetera, um, because I'm still working on my own personal EP, my own personal release, mm -hmm. uh, which hopefully is coming out. I was going to have it done by this summer. I was going to have a music video and the song out by the summer, but there's no point now in releasing anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when that's over, likely I'll have uh, my first EP out of, of my solo project. In addition to that, I'm collaborating and still producing other songs. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Marshall wants to know when we work in. Whenever. When? Okay. Let me know when the next. Let me know when the next concert is. I'm ready to do some James Brown. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna put this out there right now. Ken and Michael need to do a live. Okay, that way you both go right. live. You do your thing. Maybe something like this and. You know, that's what it is. Okay, any other questions? We're sisters. Yeah, nice. that's my sister. There you go. <laughs> what about that Stilo record you're gonna Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I <laughs> so that's also one of the songs I'm um I'm working on now that I'm gonna help to uh remix is for an artist named Skilo. Mm -hmm. Um very, very, very prominent artist, um and I really like his music, so that I'm really excited about. So, shit. shout out to the barge again. Yes, that awesome. keeps me busy. <laughs> hey, that's the you know that's the way to be because the busier you are right now, it's like every single day is exactly the same. So it's like, what can you just switch things up? <laughs> <laughs> right. Send me another one. Send me send me as many as you can. Keep me busy. Yes, yeah, keep sending. I don't me need to have free time. You guys Everyone go has on free walks time right now, So just send him over. He he's ready for it. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, and my do you, cash wait, app. Do you have a cash app? Do you have a cash app? <laughs> Darn it. Um, cash yes, app I do. Phone? Put it up. Is there, uh, can, is there a way you can post it? <laughs> you know, I don't even know if there's a way I can post it. Um, just say it and spell it. Oh God! See, this is gonna show. Okay, so <laughs> my cash app is Wolverine one four seven. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Wait, With like a dollar inside. Okay. <laughs> so when I was like, so when I was small, I loved Wolverine, but I couldn't pronounce the L, so I said Wolver. Oh. So W O V U W E E N. And yeah. One four seven. Yeah. I. <laughs> that's what I was like when you told me to say it. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I should have hey. a professional cast that right. <laughs> no, 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 no judgment here. No judgment here. Hey, it could be your first and last <laughs> name, or it could be like. I don't know, something from second That would be the right? professional thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you're on Cash App, are you on Venmo as well? I think he just posted it in the comments, that's it. Okay, yeah, so that's his yeah. Venmo and Cash App. Just wanted to make sure that it is clear and we are good to go. Um, are there any last questions in the chat? Instafame Records, oh, I see, that's right. Marshall works with Instafame Records. Mm. That's his record company. Yeah. Can't wait for the next single, March. He says, when will we see more? <laughs> I hope, hopefully soon. You know, I got to get, got to get back into shape and um, shoot yeah. for this music video. That's what I want to do. So I have, I already have my, like the song I want to shoot it for. Uh, that's all done. I just want to like, 
actually get the visuals going, but you can't, there's no camera work. You can't do any, any shooting until later. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. Maybe I'll make like a Game of Thrones winter wonderland type deal. I don't know. That's cool. I'll do something, I'll do something. but stay, stay tuned to my Instagram, stay tuned to my social media. I'll post everything there. Um, and I do appreciate all the love. I appreciate all the love from the fans. Thank you everyone for listening and coming in. And thank you, Ashley, for having me as yes. your first, not last. Yes, the first, first one. <laughs> Bring me this back. The first one. Michael was my guinea pig and he he blew it out of the park. This is this was so fun. People that I know came in, people you know you came in and it was it was a great time. And um, I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule. And that is live. Oh, I'm sorry, vibing, vibing with Ashley with Ashley. live. Sorry, I haven't said it like that. So I'm like, what's the name of my show? It's called Vibin' with Ashley Live. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> I know, mic drop, right? Boom. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> I don't have a mic over here. Some sort. <laughs> don't have a mic. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us. Michael, you're amazing. Um, I hope to see you again soon and post some good content on your Insta. And thank you all for tuning in. And we will catch you on the next Vibin' with Ashley Live. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Thanks. Bye, Michael. Bye.